Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Pull to Open, uh, a podcast in which we normally take a random journey through the history of Doctor Who, uh, but today we're going to be talking about some Doctor Who news. My name's Chris Taylor. And I'm Pete Paschal, and yeah, we're making a detour, a midweek detour. Well, not on your schedule, listener. This is just appearing in your feed, but this is it. We're talking about new stuff, because there's been so much news. There's been so, so much... much Doctor Who news in the last few weeks. It feels um, like we're living in 2023 already. I mean, I it's sort of a common thing as a Doctor Who fan. You feel like you're living in the future because the show shows us the future so often. But also, you get sort of uh, a lot of a lot of news like we've had in the last week about mm -hmm. the 14th Doctor and the 60th anniversary special. So, uh, yeah, we wanted to have a brief discussion about this, and uh, I think mm -hmm. the the headline is just exciting times, right, Pete? Times indeed. So it's funny you said you were living in 2023. I was feeling 2017 vibes, you know, when <laughs> the last time we did this, that was it, right? That was like when they announced Jody Whitaker. Yeah. And yeah, there was a right. lot of like honestly, it's it's funny, like to think about all the announcements of the doctor in the New Who era and how different they've been. Cause, you know, there was like Tenant was basically a press release. Yep. Which was okay. Fair enough. Cause it was it was a weird surprise, I think, for everyone that they were regenerating right away. Right. And I, I actually forget how Matt Smith and like the actual announcement was, cause I didn't catch wind of it until I, a day or two later. I do remember that announcement. I think I wrote mm. a story on it for Mashable while I was in Japan at the time. And all the focus was on how young he is. And the, the one, the one tweet that sticks in my head was this notion that he's he's going to fight the Daleks by playing My Chemical Romance at them. Right. Yeah, I remember. I remember <laughs> all the focus on him being. You know, I don't remember exactly how they did it. That's why it was. It was it like was it a press release? Did they? I think yeah. they trotted him out on some show at simultaneously in Britain. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was uh, a press release. It might have been one of those that was sort of released because that the news was about to break. Right. Uh, in some disreputable publication they wanted to get out ahead of it. But yeah, and then we had the, the Peter Capaldi reveal, which was huge. 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 You we know, own they, that, by the way. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say we own that at Mashable. We because did. Because we've live blogged it. <laughs> Mashable was, I oh, mean, man. we were, it was very early days of sort of digital media and the intersection with social media. And we were, I think we were really the only place that was, that was live blogging it. You we know, were. No one really thought yeah. to do it. Yeah, we, we live blogged that, that announcement that was live on the BBC and was a surprise to precisely no one because <laughs> the news had already leaked. Well, I had avoided um, the spoiler, so <laughs> it wasn't a surprise per se. But it was, And then uh, with, uh, with Jody, it, again, there was, there was definitely a lot of hints, especially in the day leading up to it, because I, I wrote, I pre-wrote the story about uh, Jody uh, getting the role because she had suddenly moved up the the betting uh, oh. rankings very, very swiftly, all of a sudden at the last minute. And uh, so much so that the, the bookies in Britain kind of stopped taking bets. And uh, so I was able to say, yeah, it's, it's probably her. I'll just write it as if it is. And then when the news was actually announced, um, I was able to put that story up. But that well, announcement was a pre-recorded yeah. like, little piece of film of her discovering the TARDIS key, right? Yeah, it was the first teaser trailer they'd mm. done. Uh, first teaser trailer to, to go along with the announcement, I should say. Right. Um, that was a huge deal. And kind of like, I, you know, each one was so different. I don't know why I expected that that be the new normal. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. they'll do teasers every time. I, yeah. I guess I also kind of thought that with the Capaldi thing, because I felt like it was kind of a marketing success for the BBC, that they were just going to do that every time. And they have it. It's like, Okay, yeah, they did it that time, and they did the teaser trailer one time, and now it's announcement at an award show, which is like, oh, right. that's actually kind of cool because you, we got the first interview right then and there. They were and right they were there, all, yeah, and they were the all dressed carpet. up. Yeah, yeah, they they were all in their you know Sunday nines and uh, you know or lack thereof in the case of uh, Shutigawa. <laughs> yes, I was, I just I like to think of all those journalists on the red carpet desperately uh, trying to figure out how to pronounce Shutigawa. Uh, right, right. Before they, uh, before they grabbed him and Russell T. Davies for an interview, uh, but yeah, we do have those wonderful interviews of them both featuring together. Um, but what's kind of interesting and different, I think, about this compared to the last two reveals, is we had within a couple of days of both announcements, we had 
at least a, a look at them kind of playing the doctor you know in, the, in jody's case it was the the, the little teaser right. uh, even if that wasn't her final costume you know we saw her in a hoodie which is kind of cool um you know cool reveal when she she you know uh takes the hood of uh, the hoodie off uh capaldi like a couple of days later they came out with his quote 100 percent rebel time lord outfit right uh, yeah. shortly after like just showing that you know clean he was going to be clean and refreshing and new and pertwee-esque compared to matt smith and his bow tie yeah didn't um, last that long yeah i mean he kind of kept it in the background for a while but yeah yeah <laughs> but, he, they turned into hoodie guy but never mind but with Shruti Gabba, we've, we've got no idea what his doctor is going to look like, uh, mm-hmm. which has led to a whole explosion of fan art on, on Twitter and other platforms, which has been uh, quite fun to see. Well, it's uh, been interesting because like, he's, he has a mustache now. Yeah. And I feel like, could he be the first doctor with facial hair? That could be interesting, yes. I mean, uh, his hair is also currently blonde. Uh, right, Which is true. not normally. And... Um, yeah, I think people have been digging into the costumes that he wears on, his character wears on Sex Education, the Netflix show. Right, right. To sort of say, well, here are some colorful outfit, outfits, you know, they they seem a bit Doctor-esque, you know, maybe maybe this is what he's going to look like. But yeah, he may be an example of the, the Doctor who looks the most different from the actor, you know, at the time of the announcement, right? Yeah, definitely uh, possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I I think his I so I I watched an episode of Sex Education. I never saw it before. Didn't know who Shuti Gakpo was before the announcement. Explored it. He seems great. He seems super charming. Uh, seems to, like I mean he I can see why they cast him. He he kind of steals every scene he's in. In yeah. In that he's like, oh wow, this guy's fun, dynamic, and. I'm not going to say much about the show because I feel like he's kind of almost too good for the show in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the but... show's kind of, you know, I I enjoyed it. I've, I watched the first uh, episode and a half and and kind of left it there some years ago at this stage, I think. Oh, wow, and... you watched it a while back. Yeah, yeah. And then, interestingly, I sort of, you know, uh, resumed it. Uh, my wife and I were sitting there on the couch sort of, like, processing the news. We're like, oh, well, well let's go watch a bit of Sex Education, you know, remind ourselves who this actor is and it cuts straight to the scene in episode two where uh he he has a rather graphic scene with a banana and mm, uh, okay. that, was, that was our first sight of the new doctor which I, is almost as good as like you know peter capaldi you know gets to be the doctor and everyone's immediately going to watch the thick of it you know in, in, during which he swears <laughs> just up assume a storm. he's gonna just yeah <laughs> swear it up as yeah, yeah for like a sailor all uh, all the time in the tardis <laughs> yeah but it's you know it's also a similar situation with with matt smith people were going to the show party animals to kind of check him out and i remember he kind of played a bit of an emo character there didn't turn out to be a particularly good guide to how yeah. he played the doctor Interesting. so that's honestly i'm kind of regretting going to watch sex education now <laughs> for multiple reasons one you know as you just articulated i don't i hope it doesn't color my impression of him as the doctor right. um so just trying to think back to when jody whitaker took over like i had seen her on broad church and, and mm-hmm. even um the um the oh what was what the black mirror uh, episode yes the, yes the, the entire history episode. of you yes. yeah she was also an attack the block Hmm. Uh, so so i think that that might have colored my perception of her a little bit because i did i I did i didn't come in with a completely you know non-calibrated jody whitaker uh machine uh now from sex education you know i don't think it's i think it's actually probably okay just because he he's very good in it i just Mm -hmm. feel like i had such a it's not the kind of show i watch i'll just say it for those who don't know it's about a (laughs) <laughs> I would describe as very unusually hypersexualized British secondary school. <laughs> yes, or high school um, as they call it, which we don't we don't really have high schools in the UK. But okay, right. it sort of you know exists in this sort of transatlantic uh, fantasy world. Um, yeah, and, and uh, yeah. but yeah, I think overall it's important to say that like the the previous roles are really not good guides to yeah. what the Doctor is going to be. If you look at you know Tom Baker playing uh, Rasputin. For example, mm-hmm. that wasn't necessarily going to give you a good guide to what his doctor was going to be like. Yeah. Uh, or, or Peter Davison. Peter Davison playing all Tristan yeah. in All Creatures Great and Small. Yeah, very, very different character. 
uh, you know, this is what actors do. They they embrace different roles, and you know, past performance, as they say with stocks, is is no guide to uh, to future behavior. I will and, say, uh, if you do enjoy Peter Davison and Doctor Who, you'll probably enjoy the two episodes he did of Magnum PI. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, which I'll also say Chris Eccleston, like in, in, God, what was he in? 28 Days Later, as this kind of military dude. Oh, uh, yeah, one well, yeah. Shallow Grave. Yeah, and yeah, Shallow Grave, my amazing. goodness. Definitely great role, absolutely no guide to his doctor. Completely nailed it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, so shooting out where we, we don't know. We're waiting to see a costume. They're sort of deliberately staying out of the limelight, which is mm. interesting, you know, Russell T. Davis gave this great speech about Jody's the Doctor now. Like we're we're gonna we're gonna stay quiet. We're gonna stay in the background until twenty twenty three. You know, and then you'll you'll be sick of hearing from us. Right, right. Um, well, we're already a little bit because yeah. <laughs> you know to to segue a bit into the other news, which mm. is very related. So, um, because it it actually leads to some speculation about Shuti Godwa. Mm. Is that the other big news is that. For the 60th anniversary, they're bringing back, of course, David Tennant and Catherine Tate. Right. Uh, you know, Doctor they don't say who they're playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're pretty sure, yeah, the Doctor and Donna. Uh, and there's actually been a little bit of leaked footage or at least photos yeah. from the set. I, I really try to avoid spoilers, so I didn't actually go in and the stories and stuff, but I, I couldn't help but see the photos. And yeah. all I could see was the photos of David Tennant kind of in a slightly different coat than we've it seen is, him before. It does rather look like he's wearing Captain Jack's coat. A little bit, yeah. Just and to it, make so, things so extra confusing. Thing. This is, it wasn't a shocking announcement. The Tenet, anyway, was not a shocking announcement at all. Because mm. it's the 60th anniversary. There's going to be some former doctors, you know, mm. maybe all of them. Who knows? But um, what this got me thinking is like, okay, there were theories about David Tennant even before the announcement of uh, Shudy Gatwa. Mm. And you know, maybe he'll be back for a run as the doctor, like before the regeneration, or maybe he'll right. even be kind of a version of the 14th doctor, like all these crazy theories. And so now, okay, now we have to go to the other news. One more announcement was made. Right. Another actress, a very uh, 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 new uh, newcomer on the scene of, of anything. She only has a couple of credits under her belt, mm. but it's um, Yasmin Finney. Yes. Who I believe is in another Netflix series called Heartstopper. I've never Correct. seen it. But that's like the only thing she's done before Doctor Who. But she mm. the character she's playing is named Rose. Mm-hmm. So I want to know, Chris, what do you make of all this? Because I have a theory on it all that I haven't fully formed, but it's it's an interesting set of uh, announcements mm. considering like all the things that um the ways these things could go together. I think, well, first of all, I'd like to say that I think RTD is playing his role to perfection. Uh, mm-hmm. He is just giving us the just enough. Shop. The ringmaster. Just enough. Yeah, he's he's just giving us just enough mystery box yeah. here to, to get us wondering. Also giving us a little bit of information behind the scenes, which he's not normally known for. He, um, uh, he, he did mention that they had another actor lined up who they thought was oh, their yeah. favorite before Shuti Gatwa sent in his audition tape and blew everyone away with it. By the way, Stephen Moffat has also said he's seen that uh, audition tape and was also blown away with it. So he seems to be a, nice. a consensus among showrunners uh, that he just did a great job. I kind <laughs> of want everyone, to see this tape, right? Yeah. You know, you well, it's of... also like everyone else who auditioned for the role is like, was it me? Did yeah. they steal it for me? <laughs> like what? Because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian Blessed. Uh, like what, everyone what else if, thinks they were second place. Yeah, which is exactly. like oh. <laughs> Hugh Grant's. Like it was almost mine. Um, yeah, so so that's interesting. But he's also when when he's posting these announcements on Instagram. We've talked on the show before about RTD's Instagram. How much he's engaging with fans there. He's doing mm. exactly what you would expect of someone with these revelations in hand, which is to go what 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 before the audience <laughs> does. Uh, he's like, what? How is this possible? Uh, how is she a rose? Like, he's deliberately asking all the questions we would ask, which is great, and thereby announcing that we're supposed to be asking them, right? So the mm. first place my uh, my imagination went to was uh, Bad Wolf, right? Maybe this has got something to do with some kind of Bad Wolf splinter, or you know, Rose is appearing right. in this universe again, 
through someone else. Like she is yeah. maybe taken over uh, a, a body to, you know, to to talk to the doctor. Yeah, who who knows? It's 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 got how it's got our head cannon going, which is kind of interesting. But I love the idea that you know we talk a lot about the Clara splinter on the show. Maybe this is a Rose splinter. Interesting. Yeah, that's kind of I kind of arrived there, and I had even a grander kind of like possible uh, wizard. Uh, you know, like <laughs> let me let me let me just start what yeah, i'm talking it. about here so bring it's it. like okay so we have the new doctor he says he's the doctor should he got what is the doctor doesn't mm-hmm. say he's the 14th doctor right so that's that's open right that's, there's been no announcement there now then they say tenant's back okay presumably it's going to be tenant somewhere in his run and he's just kind of you know what i mean like it's chronologically mm-hmm. but they didn't say that either what and and he's looking different like if it, if this is david tenant the the 10th doctor somewhere during the time he was the 10th doctor as we know it mm-hmm. would he not be in blue or brown stripes right like as we right. saw in day of the doctor he's not he's wearing something else though. okay interesting and then we have someone named rose so why mm-hmm. would you reuse the same announcement and i don't i don't know if they've said she's a companion or whatever or she's just playing rose but it's like huh what this gets me to think is that and i don't know the exact structure for this i haven't fully formed it in my head but i think he's kind of going to a multiverse of madness place Mm. where it's not just another version of the doctor or like basically this isn't the tenant we know this isn't the 10 we know right he's from some parallel reality so it could be um, then, it could be the meta crisis doctor well, the, the half human doctor well i was thinking froze. something else entirely like there's yeah. almost another universe like you think about the right. events of uh flux and <laughs> flux. what happened there and you know with you know the, all of reality other universes crashing mm. into each other like what if this is like a kind of a weird you know divergence before the convergence of the new era so they're they're just throwing out all these possibilities and what if and then i don't i don't want to take anything away from shuti godwa and i don't think they would do this but what if it is all just this head fake like he hasn't even announced the 14th doctor yet like this is all just a bunch of stuff coming together in the next in the 16th anniversary which is going to be epic and then yeah. maybe there's even someone else who might take over and oh in the rose thing i didn't even explain like maybe again it's maybe this is this parallel doctor with a parallel rose right you know that that, that don't even really match up with the ones that we know you know they just look completely different like almost a little bit of a loki thing going on there interesting so, i don't know like i, I haven't quite I, sure how this would all play out but it could be there could be like announcement after announcement and then suddenly yeah. like holy crap like what is even going on and it's all just going to come together. And this, again, is his whole way of just rebooting it all. So maybe yeah. this is the way he's actually going to deal with the Timeless Child. Yeah, yeah, because we do have to deal with that pocket watch that got dropped into the heart of the TARDIS. And, you know, that's 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 a Chekhov's gun if ever I saw one. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, it, it does, like, the, the Doctor Who universe is very confusing. And maybe this is a, you know, for the DC fans out there, a crisis on infinite Earths kind of moment. Yeah, there you go. Where, where everything collapses into one. Um, I like that you brought up Loki and you brought up Doctor Strange and the whole multiverse thing that Marvel is doing in its phase four, um, because that does make sense of uh, the story that we got when Hugh Grant was rumored to be the next Doctor. Uh, right. In, in that Daily Mirror story, you know, the other part of that, which may yet turn out to be true, even though the Hugh Grant thing isn't, so far as we know. Well, maybe, um, maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Next yeah. doctor, but he's going to like, it, it's going to be a uh, curse of fatal death for real. Yes, yes, you know? yes, like, yes, yes. going to come into the show's continuity. <laughs> yeah, for like bring a in, scene or two. Bring why it. not? Bring in Joanna Lumley, I say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love it. But but maybe the, the truthful part, you know, the grain of truth in that tabloid story was the Marvel style reboot, you know, and the, mm. The, you know the multiverse is sort of in all of our thinking right now and it's not just in in marvel the multiverse is popular uh i've now seen for the second time a fantastic movie called everything everywhere all at once uh with michelle Yeoh, mm. which, which you haven't seen get to your seen theaters it. now watch I, I, it i'm gonna end this podcast in a minute and i'm just yeah. going do it <laughs> any who fan will love this it's so timey wimey and multiple university uh, nice. that it's definitely this is definitely the era where like i feel like with the back to the future slash groundhog day era was where 
mainstream audiences really started to understand time travel mm. uh, and what it could do and time loops yeah. and what they could do for the first time. I feel like the same thing has happened with the multiverse. So this would absolutely be the point for Doctor Who to jump, not just jump on that bandwagon, but but yeah. show that it can do it better. Well, I'm going to franchise. count myself. I'm going to count myself among the cool before it was cool crowd since I really like sliders back in the nineties. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. yeah, everybody. Yeah, that was the original multiverse. Yes, but, sliders is the hipster choice for sure. Well, to your point though, on this this sort of trend, it's essentially a trend, right? It's like when mm-hmm. everyone does meteor movies or dinosaur movies or whatever. Now everyone's not just superhero movies; everyone's doing multiverse continuities, I guess. Yeah, which is great to a point, and I do feel like. Well, if we have to wait a whole year for this in 2023, are we going to be a little burned out on the multiverse and, you know, mm. multiple versions of a character and the fan service attached to it? Uh, I hope not. I think Doctor Who is completely entitled to do it, mm. given its whole universe and every all the stuff it's built up. But uh, I, I am a little worried about that because usually these specials like these even these Doctor Who ones, you know, the fan service comes not necessarily once every 10 years, but it's a special thing. And you can't just do, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home again. again. So it's a one shot <laughs> deal. And then you can't, you know, it's done, mm. done. You can't do it for another couple of decades. Well, we do know that like Marvel is going to extend its multiverse uh, storyline at least into 2023, because that's when we'll get uh, Loki season two, right? Which is very much at the heart of the whole multiverse narrative right. so that that is sort of baked in for a while like i don't think we're going to yeah. be post multiverse well, i'm, I, I'm more I, i'm more not about the the actual things that are planned i'm more about like are we as fans going to be mm. tired of it are we going to be like okay because at some level when you do this stuff and everyone's done it right you were you cited crisis of infinite Earths. they did uh and actually in the Arrowverse, they did a whole mega crossover mm. among universes it's fun, it's cool, but it is like it every time you do it, it it sort of gets less special. And since every universe is doing this now, like the whole idea is kind of getting less special. Like I I, I feel like we we we're good we as fans are starting to get burned out on these multiple reality, let's bring all the different reboots that we've ever done into a single thing. Mm. Which is again, it's almost like it's almost like a thing you need to do now in every <laughs> in every cinematic or TV universe. You just got to bring in all the inspirations for it for some special stuff, and uh, if you, <laughs> it's just predictable, mm. you know. I I hear you on the risk the, formula. Uh, the, the risk of it being too formulaic by by the time we get to the 60th anniversary, but I also think that this means that Doctor Who can have the last word. Mm. on on multiverses and also it's it's kind of the franchise in most need of some multiverse flattening yeah right we, we've talked endlessly on this podcast about all of the contradictions over mm. the 60 year run of the show that that could be dealt with uh if if you did a, a crisis on infinite earth kind of thing and said nope there's now just one universe and uh you know you know you could say that the flux was sort of uh, the beginning of that um you know, mm. RTD, I'm sure, has clever ways of, of tying it in, in to uh, the various continuities. Because th- wasn't that also the continuity of, like, Journey's End? You're, that all the universes are kind of smashing into each other, and that's why we get to see Rose again? Right, uh, yeah. So it's... so it's kind of been done, but it was also kind of one element among 5,000 in Journey's End uh, that kind of got glossed over, I think. Yeah, they kind of reboot their universe, you know, because Cracks in Time was similar. And, mm. um, but although, like, it depends on, you know, the, the the amount of fan service sort of depends on, like, how, how epic it is, I guess, right? So, like, Journey's End was certainly more closer to the thing we're thinking about, where you bring back yeah. everybody, you do something epic, you raise the stakes massively, and then, you know, everybody kind of goes home. Um you know, I I think in Doctor Who, what like what, what was that really the last time Doctor Who did that? I mean, I guess Day of the Doctor. Sorry, obviously, right? Uh, right. Day of the right. Doctor was really the last. So it's so ten years since something that huge. That's fine. Um, I just feel like that I that feeling you get as a fan when you see it. Like I only have so much dopamine that <laughs> <laughs> I could I could tap into before I just start to go. Eh, I don't know. Is it giving me the same fix anymore? I need I need a new drug. Well, the uh, important thing that that we can say for now is it is it not only has all of this news uh, from shooting up on down has has fans energized, but it also has the casual fans energized. 
Like I've seen so many tweets along the lines of, oh, I might have to start watching it again. Um, you know, uh, the, there are a lot of people who kind of tapped out either during Jody's era or, or Capaldi's era, or even Matt Smith's era. Like there, there are still, yeah. you know, tenant stands who kind of put the show down at that point. Um, and I think yeah. it seems that RTD is going all out to bring everyone into the fold and to yeah, get I everyone mean, excited. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, there, there's, there's hope for sure. I, 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 I'm hesitant to read too much into a tweet or two. Um, and I definitely get the excitement. I'm excited. I think it's great. They're bringing back, um, uh, you know, someone young and that, you know, like the, the, the expanding the audience. I think all of that's great. Um, though he isn't very well known. I think they're going to have a lot of marketing and they should have a lot of marketing. Um, but I really think it's just like bring back it's I'm more excited about RTD and the possibility of just bringing back the type of stories he used to tell, which I think is the thing that's really going to bring back the masses. Like it's not going to be that, you know, they, they, uh, even though it's great, they cast for the first time, some of African descent, you know, that's the reason to tune in is because he's going to be an awesome adventures that are really well written and there's going to be these really rich characters in it. And I think, you know, the RTD gives me a lot of hope that that's coming back. And for sure. I I think the return of Donna is kind of emblematic of that, right? She, she really was the, uh, the people's princess as it were, you know, she was, she's like, she's the most, you know, we, we, we've talked about this on the show again. We, we used to think of Donna of uh, Rose as sort of being the, um, the, the kind of the uh, gold standard of a, a fan speaking for the average audience. Yeah. Uh, totally. But I think Donna kind of kind of leapfrogged that in mm-hmm. in a spectacular way. Everyone loves her character. Um but also here's what I'll caution about trying to think about the 60th anniversary based on this information, you know, a year out. And and that is this. If if we had known, if we'd gotten like leaked pictures from the set of the 50th anniversary mm-hmm. and we see Billy Piper in rags you know, sitting on hay bales <laughs> in a barn. We're like, what the hell has happened to Rose? <laughs> right? How are they going to explain this? This, I, I, you know, this is this is Moffaty nonsense. How dare they? Um, <laughs> Rose you know, became a farmer? What? <laughs> <laughs> why, is, why is she flirting with John Hurt? What the hell? Um, but yeah, you know, it depends on, depends on how much was leaked. But like, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't just wouldn't have yeah, the capacity sure. to understand it, right? You know, no. you need the story. You need to understand who the moment was, and you know, the, that that essential piece of plot information. You you can you can take these things in any direction. Um, it is we we can all just hope and pray that lightning will strike again, uh, story wise, and uh, all of these developments will make sense in time. Yeah. Uh, he, he might have literally just took a dark coat on his way out the TARDIS and it was just a one, you know, like it was just like, oh, there's nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, that coat wreck we were talking about in front yeah. of us, uh, the, yep. the, the hat stand has made it back and it yep. looked, lo and behold, had Captain Jack's hat, uh, coat on it. So just jump into that, David. Maybe, maybe they just going to fix it in post. That's it. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Well, this is, we, this is what we've got so far. We don't want to, go too far down the speculation uh, road the speculation continuum since <laughs> we we just don't, there's not a lot to go on it'd just be us ranting so yeah the uh, speculation continuum will itself collapse along with the rest of the multiverse god uh, could it please <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be back next week with our regular episode where we take on the claws of access with a special guest everyone uh, very, so please stay tuned for that very excited and- to get my axe night on <laughs> don't we all don't don't go too far man you can od on that stuff pretty quickly <laughs> all right remember follow us on tiktok at tiktok no not at tiktok actually follow doctor who on tiktok yes they have just that's the one thing we forgot to, to mention doctor who is officially on tiktok just like us it's i believe i actually i forget what it is it's bbc doctor who i think but i'm sure if you search doctor who on tiktok you'll find them and you will find us pull to open on tiktok where we post a ton of videos all the time uh give us a shout out doctor who we love it and um you know yeah, follow, we, we follow have we have posted way more tiktoks than than uh, the doc, the official doctor who account just yeah so yeah we're, we're, we, we could give you some tips guys you know reach out <laughs> you got some thoughts 
Uh, but yeah, follow us there. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Pull to Open 63 and come on back for the Claws of Axos coming at you. Right. See you next week, guys.